Hello everyone. Welcome back to Coding with Sijas. This is the episode 2 of a brand new series Mastering Fury Elements. In the last video, I introduced you to Fury Elements. What it is, why it is used and what are the different floor plans available. If you missed that video, check out the link in the description. Today, let's get sahan dirty. I'll show you how to set up your development environment in Visual Studio Code and generate your first Fury Element List Report application using Fury Extension Pack. Let's jump right in. All right. Before we begin, let's make sure the following things are installed in your system. First, a Visual Studio Code IDE. Second, Node.js. I'll be giving the link for downloading these in the description. Once you're done with this, let's go to the next step. Once the installation is complete, open Visual Studio Code, go to the extension tab and search for SAP Fury Extension Pack. So you should find the Fury Fury Tools Extension Pack and that should have the required extension so just click on the install i have already installed it and once that is done let's jump to the next step to run a fury element app it is also a prerequisite have a odata service which has required annotations where do you find an odata service right now with all the annotation what is required don't worry i have created a repository which will be having an odata service which you can simply clone to your local repository and run the instructions and right away get an odata service with annotations all you have to do is go to the link and click on the code and clone this repository so once you have done that you just need to ensure you install the cds sdk which will download the cap command line interface which you can use to run your service so once that is done we just need to run cds watch so i'll quickly open the repository in my system so i have already have it locally so i'm opening it and i'm pressing command tilt simple which will give me this terminal so i'm writing cds watch there so it runs a service i can click on the local host 4040 and it will open the service and i click on browse so you can see the metadata and down in the bottom you should also be seeing the fury annotations we will go in detail in a later video so let's simply say that it has the service and all the required annotations for this demo so now i'll keep the uh instance active i'll create a new window so this is the window where i'll be creating a fury app element app so click on control shift p in a windows or command shift p in a mac you should see fury open application generator if you can't see it just type fury open application generator and open that so first you have to choose the template what you want so we are creating a list report let me click on a uh, list report page next i need to show a data source so i'll just say connect to an odata service and i'll give our local url so it's localhost 4040 slash browse so i'll enter that and click on next so it's asking uh, which entity you want to select so obviously we are going to select books and it's asking navigation entity we are giving none it is also asking automatically add columns to the list page of a section and object page so i'll just say no i'll choose a responsive table next and i'll give the module name as books application title as fury books i n dot sijas and i'll keep the remaining setting as it is maybe uh for this i'll select coding with sijas and done click on finish and now in the background it is generating the application for you 
let's wait for the installation and dependencies to be completed yeah so the installation is completed let's just open that folder i'll click on open folder and choose books and now it shows the new newly created folder so it contains the uifi yaml file where you can see it is proxying our odata service and remaining two yaml file is used for running mock data and you have the package json which is setting up all the scripts which we require to run the application and if i go to the web app you'd see the manifest which is the application descriptor where all the settings uh, regarding the application is also available and i'll go in detail in another video uh, then we have the component js which is simply instantiating the fury core app component and the iit in text where you can enter your text so pretty much it's that an annotation is basically empty because we are not go going to give any custom annotations right now so let's run the app so you can do it either via clicking package json and you know hovering on the start and run script or you can just open the terminal window in the same folder and enter npm start right so we'll just open localhost 8080 now in our browser window and open the index.html and this should app the fury open the fury app as you can see the required libraries are being loaded and you can see the title or the name price currency is already coming up i click on go and you should see the list report is loaded and when i click on navigation inside i see the book details as well so how does it appear so that's the most important question which everyone will be having let me simply explain how it is done so as you can see here uh, we have a, a filter bar at the top that comes from the uh, it's 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 that comes from the selection field annotation so catalog catalog service is our service name books is our entity so you have to find this uh, for the annotation regarding the books and you can see there is a selection fields where it has id price and currency code so if you go to the app you would see the same thing id price and the currency code now how does the table appears so that's from the line item annotation i have ui dot line item where i have several data field with the title author genre name price and currency uh simple etc so as you can see same thing here we have the title author name price and currency so th and that's it your first fury element app is up and running using visual studio code in the next video We'll explore more on annotations, what they are, how do they look, and how can you utilize it to a model your UI. If you find this useful, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe the channel. And also to get your up-to-date notifications, click on that bell icon. That's it for today. See you in the next video.